Hi, my name is Ida Osebe and I'm the creation team leader in eBrains. In this demo, I would like to introduce the different options of data sharing that we have developed on our platform. But before I go into this, I want to briefly highlight its context. The Human Brain Project has worked towards a concrete aim of establishing an e-infrastructure for neuroscientific research to ultimately benefit the individual researcher as well as the community. As many of you are aware, eBrains is the place where the products that have been developed under the Human Brain Project are presented to the outside world. And we will be filling eBrains gradually over the coming and final phase of our European flagship funding. And a central part of this e-infrastructure is the collection, curation and integration of research data. The data that you submit from the various research groups in Europe and around the globe is multimodal, heterogeneous and differentially organized. All of these diverse datasets needs to be categorized and described in a standardized way so that they can be effectively searched, compared and analyzed using integrated tools and workflows. This is curation. Following all of the steps of curation makes it possible to link your dataset to relevant other datasets through a simple search. And in the backdrop of this search lies the eBrains knowledge graph and highly flexible metadata schemas developed in the HPP, such as Open Minds. The datasets undergo spatial anchoring in human and rodent coordination systems that allow for visualization and regional searches based on anatomical location. These features facilitate reuse and will in the eBrains e infrastructure be coupled with modular analysis workflows that will enable researchers to analyze and model brain activity and function on large combinations of datasets. Before I go into more specifics about data sharing in eBrains, I want to briefly mention why data sharing and the quality of the service should be of interest to the neuroscientific researcher and the community. Because it's not only to ensure that HPP and eBrains is getting its data for integration and use, and in that context benefit other researchers, but what you personally or your group should keep in mind. There are several clear advantages of sharing datasets from your research. And first and foremost, the currency of science today, citations. When sharing data on a data sharing platform that issues DOIs, you can be cited for all future work that uses your data. And in addition, there is an increasing amount of research showing that the citations for the original paper belonging to the data also increases substantially. And this graph is from a recent paper showing citation advantages and displays the increasing trends towards open data when publishing in several journals. And this citation benefit is increasingly relevant if other researchers are able to search for and find your dataset in a trusted portal. Secondly, and also a second currency, pleasing the funders. Open data and open science is an increasingly large focus area of many central funding institutions. And several are requiring a data management plan with an emphasis on fair and open data. The increasingly applied fair data guidelines indicate that data are as findable, as accessible, interoperable and reusable as possible when sharing data. eBrains has had a focus on applying the same principles when building our data sharing platform and services. And in line with this, the curation service is built to enable data management support for data that is published on eBrains, assisting with advice and tools to make your data more in line with the FAIR guidelines. The services also include long-term storage of your structured data, in a federated and scalable data storage and computing infrastructure. This also means a useful and secure backup of your data set. 
Seeing as your data set and work becomes increasingly visible and available to others, this can enable new collaborations without the need for personal contact in advance. And we welcome all types of neuroscientific data, models and tools. And models were introduced last year and software was implemented just a few months back. The platform uses metadata tags to sort and represent the data, so you can more easily find what you're looking for. For instance, species or method. Here is the dataset card for a particular dataset. You have metadata, descriptions of the dataset and projects, the people involved, the files, the DOI, the license, the publications connected, and a quick overview of the basic metadata for the entities. Also, eBrain's datasets comes with a data descriptor that describes how to reuse the dataset in a concise and structured manner. And there are features to easily share the dataset with others. You also have the option to place your fully curated dataset under embargo, meaning access is restricted to the data while waiting for it for, for instance, an article to be published. It can be beneficial to complete the curation process in advance, for instance, if first author members of the project need to leave your research group before the article is finished. In order to understand more about how and why the knowledge graph is useful and how parts of the curation service work, we want to highlight one of the ways we work with creating, modifying and publishing datasets on the eBrain's knowledge graph. This is one of our tools to enter metadata and describe datasets in the graph system. Here we add free text descriptions and metadata description, descriptions to connect to the various instances. We browse the datasets. We enter the free text. We connect it to all of the previous entries in the past. And the power of the graph system in this regard is relevant. The new dataset that was added is now a part of a large system of interconnected nodes. And the power of the graph is that all related nodes are connected. They form the backbone of the eBrain's knowledge graph search. So behind the scenes, the curator makes sure that the right current connections are established. We can view the graph representation like this and select the various portions that are relevant for us. Curators can preview the dataset and send this to the authors for revision. And that we release the dataset onto the Knowledge Graph search to link to the interactive Atlas viewers. Here's a small preview into the RAT Atlas coupled with the datasets. You navigate and select a region in the 3D viewer. You can directly access and view the dataset card from the eBrain's Knowledge Graph search. You can pin, meaning save, multiple datasets of your choosing. And you can navigate by region semantically. These interactive viewers are under continuous development and will include multiple features in the time to come. Here we have the 3D and interactive viewer of the human brain, where you can browse region specific data sets as well as results.
Here you can see all of the data sets connected to this particular region. You can view it in the viewer, the span of this particular data set, download the files directly, and view the data set card in the knowledge graph search. You can also directly inspect results in certain cases. Here, neurotransmitter density profiles across the cortical layers. There are several options when you consider publishing your data on the eBrains platform. Firstly, you can provide all forms of raw research data, models or software that you consider valuable for an end user. For this, you submit a curation request. request. The request is evaluated depending on our workload and its size and relevance. The dataset undergoes the steps of curation where it's linked to the eBrains knowledge graph and appended to our Atlas coordination systems. Finally, the data is published where you receive a citable DOI along with a license. And after this, your data can be reused and it's optional to undergo more in-depth curation to more easily integrate to analysis workflows. Alternatively, you may choose to publish your data set alongside the publication of your manuscript to a journal. To an increasing degree, journals are requiring or recommending to provide the data of your publication to an appropriate repository. eBrains is now a recommended repository for nature scientific data. There are three options for this approach. You may want to publish ahead of your article, what is referred to as a preprint option. Following curation, you will immediately receive a DOI to append to your manuscript before submitting your article. The second, or the pre-published option, allows you to prepare your data for publication, release the metadata and description, but maintain an embargo or download restriction on the data until the article has been published. This enables this, the discoverability of your data and allows you to link to your dataset card URL in the eBrains knowledge graph. Upon publication of the article, we will release the embargo and you can append the DOI to your article. The third option is to initiate curation to prepare and finalize your dataset for release, but keep the dataset unreleased in its final version until the publication of your article is ready. Under option two and three, reviewers of your manuscript will be provided private access to your dataset on eBrains for reviewing purposes. The steps of curation are key to optimizing your data sharing to adhere to the FAIR guiding principles. So I would like to describe the most important steps in our curation process. The curation process is initiated by a request, and you can do so by going to the website or contact us directly on curation support at ebrains.eu. Then a curator gets assigned to you. You deliver data and metadata. The basic curation takes place. The datasets gets published and gets integrated with the Atlas. Following a curation request, these are the most important steps for you to complete. You fill out an ethics survey. You structure your data in an understandable and consistent way. You write a data descriptor. And this is a manual for, few, for users of your data. And a rich and thorough data descriptor increases your chances of reuse. You fill out the Open Minds metadata form. And this fits your data to the metadata schema. Having a highly detailed metadata description leads to more people finding and using your data. You choose a license to share your data under. 
And finally, you upload your data to a long-term storage. We have divided our curation service into a three-tiered or layered process. This has been created to adopt to the varying experience requirements and engagements of the researchers across Europe. In our experience, researchers very often have highly differential needs and the level of engagement can be adopted to how fair you wish your data sharing to be. We undergo basic curation as tier one where the most central information about your data set gets registered. Then the data set gets anchored via spatial coordinates in our Atlas integration process as tier two. And finally, you can opt to undergo in-depth curation as tier three, where data sets from certain domains such as electrophysiology and calcium imaging can be further curated to make them more readily integrated in combined analysis workflows. So that's what I have for you in this demo. And if you are interested in hearing more about our creation service workflows and possibilities, uh, please come and see our posters at uh, Sunday and Monday, 10.30 to 12. So thank you for your attention uh, and I would like to refer to and thank the team behind all of the work that has been done and will be done in our coming phase. And if you want to share your data, go to ebrains.eu.